This video will cover the lab using density to determine the sugar content in commercial beverages. The purpose of these videos is to basically give you a, a preview of what the lab will actually do and where you can get shortcuts and efficiencies and, and safety information as well. So if you have any questions, please be sure to see your instructor. Fundamentally, there are four major questions that motivate chemistry. So my philosophy at General Chemistry Lab is that we should try to show how the things that you use in uh, learn and lecture are actually used uh, potentially by chemists. So, you know, so this is all, you know, I, I prefer my labs to be about what chemists actually do. And if you look at the practical concerns of chemistry, that sort of goes beyond sort of understanding the beauty of atomic bonding and, and structure and all that stuff, there are four primary motivators, okay? And they're questions. What is this stuff that I have? How much do I have? How do I better make this stuff? How do I get more of it or make it cheap, more cheaply or whatever? And then finally, how do I make better stuff that has different properties? So really, if you pretty much boil down all of chemistry uh, experiments to really nail them down one of these four questions or multiple ones. So we're gonna focus a lot on question number two. How much of that stuff do I have? That is really the focus of this lab and other labs will look at the other questions as well. So in this lab, you're gonna be looking at sucrose solutions, good old table sugar. And the idea here, you're supposed to read the, the uh, manual, um, is that you take, you're gonna make different uh, sucrose solutions that have different amounts of sucrose in them, and we'll calculate the mass percentage, so how much sucrose is in the mass solution on a mass basis. So it'll be a lot of using the balances. And then finally, after you make those solutions, we'll weigh 10 mil aliquots of each of those, and we'll also do this with water, and we'll determine the density because we'll get the mass, we'll know the volume, so we'll be able to determine density and we'll get that in triplicate. So now we should be able to relate then mass percent versus density. So we have a nice graph that way. And so we'll get a hopefully a linear fit. Uh, and then this line that we'll generate can be, be used to calculate the density of an, uh, we'll determine the density of an unknown solution, in this case, tang. So we're only gonna do one solution, we're not gonna do a bunch. Um, and by calculating the density, just weighing out 10 mil aliquots again, you should be able to then use the graph to calculate the mass percent of sugar in a tang solution. You should then be able to figure out how much sugar is in tang. So this is a fundamental question. Uh, how much stuff do I have? In this case, how much sugar do I have in my tang? And uh, we should be able to get that with a relatively straightforward experiment. So we have certain objectives that we want you to get out of Gen Chem that will be the focus. Each lab will focus on different objectives. Some objectives will be repeated. So in this lab, we're, this is really sort of a get to know the lab type of exercise, but you'll use balances. You'll use sort of our basic chemistry glassware. And then we'll show sort of the chemistry way of doing data analysis in terms of making tables and making graphs. And sometimes it's a little different than other fields. So it's always good to sort of just have what the expectations are in terms of the instructor and in terms of the discipline. And I think the one of the take home messages from this lab is that, you know, to get really good data, this lab will show how well you can be reproducible and how careful you are. And so, um, you know, this is an important part sometimes of chemistry is being able to really get precise data. Sometimes it's not as important, but this will be one where, you know, precision will matter. And so hopefully uh, you can uh, get good practice with that sort of activity. So we are using a commercial lab manual, so there are going to be times we will change the protocol a little bit from what's uh, in the book, and so it's a good place to check here before you start filling out your lab notebook. Um, we're going to work in groups of four, um, and basically that'll work out. There are three solutions uh, that you have to make. There's one water solution and there's an unknown solution. So there are five solutions total. So if uh, one person does a uh, each solution and then the person that does the water they don't have to make anything so they can also do the tang and that'll be a pretty efficient way of getting things done um, they use something called pipettes volumetric pipettes um, we're going to just use the graduate cylinders that are in your drawer um, now you're going to be a little bit more careful with this one to get reproducibility but you know i think uh, that is uh, something that it, it can give you good data in way they do talk about beakers, or they talk about bottles in the text. We're going to use beakers instead. Just use any size beaker that fits. It doesn't really matter which size. And they talk a lot about tearing things on a balance. So if you watch the video on how to measure solids, we talked about what tearing means. Um, in this case, I would not tear it because we're going to have a lot of people using the balances. And so to prevent sort of backups, I think 
we'll just weigh the beaker. We'll get a mass of the beaker, and then we'll get a mass of the beaker plus the solution, etc. So um, those will be the major changes. If you read along, uh, it should be pretty straightforward. So the first thing was you're going to be weighing things into beakers uh, to make the solutions. So here's the balance. Again, we're not we're going to tear it against uh, zero, and then we're going to weigh the mass of the balance um, and write that down in our lab notebook. We have six balances per side, and so with 30 people, you know there can be the chance for a backlog. So the key here is to know you got all your stuff there and make sure that it's efficient. Now you're going to have bold uh, jars there with sugar. Some of them will probably, they'll probably be big enough you're going to have to use your spatula. In this case, I just sort of dumped some. Um, the key is not, they do tell you the masses you want to get close to. Um, the key is you don't have to hit exactly those numbers, but whatever you get, you weigh. And okay, that's really the important part. Okay, so the um, first, after you've made the, weighed out the solution, you're going to measure 50 mils out in your graduate cylinder. Again, the key here is to get the right volume, use a pipette if you have to. If you've watched the measuring liquids portion of uh, the tutorials, you know that, that that will work. So eventually you'll need to stir with a stir rod and make sure it's really well dissolved. I probably want to use a bigger beaker than one I have, especially if you're going to try to swirl. The key here is not to spill. So do not spill. And so you know the weight of this beaker, you know the weight of the sugar, and now we're going to measure the weight of the solution. This will then allow you to calculate the mass of the solution and then determine the percent sucrose that is in the solution. Okay, and so now we're going to, uh, at this point, uh, you're going to measure 10 out of 10 mils of the graduate cylinder. It's a good idea, especially if you've been doing repeated things, to so just give your, uh, you've got plenty of solution there, just give a quick little rinse with your uh, solution there to make sure that uh, you don't have any drops of water in there that may uh, alter the density uh, compared to what it is in the beaker. So the key here is again, you know, pour it in there to get uh, so the meniscus is on the 10 mil mark. And then if you have to, you can use a pipette to adjust the volume. Now you can weigh the uh, weigh your solution. I would, you know, you could put it in your pre pre weighed beaker. Probably be the easiest way to do that. And you're going to do that in triplicate. Um, and determine whether you've got decent reproducibility. Then it's really just the same exercise again with the tang, wipe the tang out, measure 10 mils out, um, and then get the, get the weight of that. At that point, basically, you have the experiment uh, complete. Once you sort of, if you have numbers that don't match very well, then maybe you do a fourth reading or whatever. In terms of finishing the lab, just wash everything out. This will be a pretty sticky lab if we don't uh, do that. Just wash everything out with water and flush down the sink. Make sure you don't have any uh, little sticky drips left on the bench or else we'll have bugs or something in here by the time we do it next week.